So today I am going to talk about how the coronavirus infects our respiratory system and how does it cause us difficulty in breathing. Welcome to Kunjus Media. Hello everyone, welcome back to Kunjus Media. Hope you all are doing good and are staying safe. So today I am going to talk about how the coronavirus infects our respiratory system and how does it causes difficulty in breathing. So of course, uh, coronavirus can affect not just our respiratory system but other systems of our body such as you know circulatory system, uh, you know excretory system and so on. So I'll be focusing more on how the coronavirus particles enter our respiratory tract, you know, infect it, and how does it causes what we so call as difficulty in breathing or pneumonia. So before uh, talking about you know how the coronavirus affects our body, it's necessary to know about the structure of coronavirus. I had already explained it in my other video, but I'll uh, precisely explain you how uh, the structure of coronavirus will be. So it's again a protein coat that has RNA as the genetic material, and it's highly infectious. Uh, you know, and it can invade a lot of you know our body parts, more commonly affecting our respiratory system. So let's move on how the coronavirus particles enter our body and how do they reach our respiratory tract and you know causes all the changes in our respiratory tract and how does it affect our body Now moving on to how the virus particles enters our respiratory tract and you know thereby causing difficulty in breathing So these virus can enter our body either by two ways one will be fecal contamination and the other one is droplet infection so the most common one is droplet infection so when a person who is affected with you know virus sneezes or coughs all you know the droplets which are scattered into the air so these droplets are taken up by a healthy person when he or she breathes and these virus particles thereby enters the respiratory tract as you can see these are the virus particles and they enter our respiratory tract so this is how the structure of a respiratory tract looks like and it consists of the nose the larynx pharynx and the windpipe and finally the lungs so as you can see these are the virus particles which have been deposited on the lungs so when we look on to the microscopic view our respiratory tract is lined by a lot of cells so the most common one is epithelial cells to be more specific these are the ciliated columnar epithelial cells so as you can see as the name says they have a cilia and long slender like columnar cells so as you can uh, as you know these uh, cilia they are uh, the structures which are responsible for the movement of particles in and out of our respiratory tract so when these virus particles enters our uh, you know the membranes they get deposited on the cilia and they finally lead to infection of our you no know, cells or the tissues now as the infection proceeds the virus particles penetrate deeper and deeper and it finally you know destroys almost all the cells and tissues present in a particular organ and this stage we call as necrosis which finally leads to accumulation of you know mucus that's increased mucus production and causes increased permeability of the capillaries so by increased permeability of capillaries we mean here that our respiratory tract or you no know, the mucus membrane has lost its capacity to filter the waste products that enters our body so increased permeability of capillary finally leads to pneumonia or the you know what we call as difficulty in breathing which is the most common symptom of the virus infected you know body right so what now let's see specifically how pneumonia is caused by looking on deeply into the you know structures of alveoli so as you know pneumonia is a condition where the air sacs get inflamed so as you know the lungs are uh, having tiny air sacs which are called as the alveoli so these alveoli have alveolar membranes so these alveolar membranes are responsible for the exchange of gases between our respiratory membrane and our blood which means they you know give out all the waste products taken all the you know oxygen and other useful substances 
so when these virus particles enter into the alveoli so this is how our alveoli looks like and here there are a lot of proteins called as the interleukin 1 the tumor necrosis factor alpha and etc there are a lot of uh, you know proteins present here so this is the alveoli and this is the alveolar membrane so here when these virus particles enter the alveoli it decreases the partial pressure of oxygen that means it it leads to decreased oxygen production or a condition which is called as hypoxemia right so hypoxemia is a condition where our body or our blood doesn't have sufficient oxygen to carry out its needs so this condition is detected by the chemoreceptors which are present in the hypothalamus of our brain and it leads to a condition which is called as alveolar edema so as the word edema says it's swelling this swelling occurs due to the accumulation of fluid like our mucus so this condition leads to you know increased work for breathing or difficulty uh, in breathing right so this difficulty in breathing we call as pneumonia so this is how it affects our respiratory tract though it can cause lot of other diseases as you know it can affect our heart as well and it can attack our, attack our kidney so in heart it increases the blood pressure increases the blood volume and it can thereby lead to multiple organ dysfunction and in the same way it can attack our kidneys and it can lead to you know a cure, you know inflammation of our kidneys and you know again multiple organ dysfunction so i've been more uh, you know i focus more on how it affects our respiratory tract so this is how it affects our respiratory tract finally leading to pneumonia so now a person is already affected with the virus and what happens when new virus particles enters so these are the new virus particles that enters our body and uh, it's this is the rna so it penetrates through all the membranes and you know this is the ribosome the rna gets attached to our ribosome and it's there's a process called as translation that occurs converting the rna to the viral proteins so these viral proteins you know combine with our genetic material and leads to the formation of certain kind of cells called as the type 2 pneumonocytes so as the name says you can understand it's type 2 pneumonia and this is how the life cycle of a virus continues so it leads to pneumonia and the cycle begins you know uh, continuing so that's it and this is how coronavirus affects our respiratory system so i think it's time to wind up our video and uh, finally if you liked watching the video do give a like do share and do subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet do comment as well so that's it hoping to see you all in my next video until then everyone take care stay safe bye please do like share and subscribe to channel